Hello and welcome to the Flourishing Introvert Talks with me, Joe Rawbone. This is the podcast that celebrates the natural gifts of introverts so that we can flourish in all situations. Episode 243, How to be present and let me add, without compromising who you are as an introvert. We know that having presence matters. Our Majesty of Quiet Presence episode and the live show demonstrated that really powerfully. And I've noticed a confusion that exists about whether presence and being present are one and the same thing. To me, they are not. And in this episode, I'm keen to distinguish between the two. I'm choosing to do that through the lens of negotiation. And unlike the last episode, this is about how we negotiate with ourselves and why we might need to. All will become clearer later on. Now, I might have an unconventional view about presence and being present, and I'm good with that. I'm not here to simply churn out what everyone else thinks. I'm here to bring my own experience and ideas to the fore. Presence is something that someone either has or doesn't have, but it's pretty subjective and not defined or even decided by me necessarily. Presence is a sort of effortless aura, a personal quality that captures the attention and imagination of others, which in many ways forms the basis of connection. I don't set out to develop my presence, although I can understand if I have presence through feedback. And whilst I may desire to have presence, it may still evade me. On the other hand, I can be present, which usually takes effort because it's about bringing my whole self, my undivided attention and my full awareness to the here and now. The effort involved can be especially challenging for we introverts and might be the sort of thing that we let ourselves off the hook for. If you've ever found yourself in a situation or thought, oh, my batteries are just too drained or I'm overwhelmed or even this isn't my kind of scene, then chances are you're opting out of being present, in which case, to those around you, if you're not fully present, it's noticeable. Does that sound harsh? Maybe. But the truth is sometimes difficult to hear. And that's where negotiation with self comes in. Unsurprisingly, William Uri has a view on this too, Self or inner negotiation is about managing our own internal conflicts, decisions and priorities, which Uri says I need to be able to do in order to negotiate with others effectively. So much like a lot of what we talk about on my podcast, it all starts with self. I need to be able to ask myself and explore three basic questions as a starter. 1. How important is it for me to be present in the situation I'm in or about to face? Can I be in the stands, somewhat detached and watching from afar? Or do I need to warm up and get on the court so that I can engage with proceedings? Number 2. How will me being present or not impact others and my personal brand? This is not from an entirely self-absorbed perspective, but we all have a personal brand and as an introvert in a business environment, my brand can either help or hinder my success. And the same is true for you. Number three, I need to really understand those internal conflicts and be honest with myself so I can manage them and create a workable solution. That invariably means coaching and or personal development. There is a word of warning here though, as this exploration can quickly turn into overthinking and we are then in danger of letting ourselves off the hook. Make no mistake, 
flourishing introverts step onto the court when needed in spite of any discomfort and potentially lack of preparation. You see, there is an underlying driver behind this episode emanating from my beliefs on this topic. We know only too well that together we are facing this bias towards the extrovert ideal and that it won't shift all the while we stay in the stands when we need to be on the court. So there is some personal sacrifice to be made. Some of my generation and those before me who were influential in my development seemed to recognise when sacrifice was needed and they took appropriate action. Back to that inner negotiation. They didn't necessarily want to put their heads above the parapet but they were prepared to for the sake of a worthy cause. Indeed, there are many far younger than me who are also showing that they're prepared to take action in this way. But I'm going to be honest here. My big worry is that too many, and across the board age-wise, are happy to sit back and let others take the strain of initiating and making change. Worse than that, they sometimes mock or barrack from the stands Some turn their face away so they can't be accused of seeing and not taking action. I've had people tell me that I'm wasting my time and that the bias will never shift. And that may be true, but I'll keep taking intentional action all the while I am able. Because without action, it certainly never will change. But I digress. Well, slightly anyway. We can each do our bit to shift the bias by being fully present when it matters. That means looking ahead, seeing what's in your calendar and negotiating with yourself about which situations demand you to be on the court and which are okay for you to be in the stands. My clients need me to be fully present when I'm coaching or delivering training, whether it's face to face or virtually. I can't say, yeah, I'm just not feeling it today, so I'll keep my camera off and do the bare minimum. You can be sure that I'll have pre-charged before working with clients and will have time booked out afterwards to recharge too. Personally, I choose to be on camera even when I'm just a meeting attendee. You see, and this is controversial... I don't buy the argument of Zoom fatigue, given the reasons provided and the very small sample size of the research study. I know it's very fashionable and people have jumped on the bandwagon citing it as a reason to keep their cameras off. And I do accept that for some neurodivergent individuals, it may be challenging. But surely that's more reason to know my people personally. And... It's about using the technology appropriately and not hosting poorly run meetings or trainings. You see, I've personally witnessed people being off camera so that they can zone out, scroll their phone or do other work. We'd never do that in a face-to-face meeting, would we? Well, not in my meetings anyway. There may be an increased cognitive load for some, including the neurodivergent, but those who are appropriately attentive in face-to-face meetings will find very little difference. Our team members, whether we're leaders or just colleagues, need us to be fully present if we are to minimise misunderstandings and perform well as a team. And here's the kicker. Being present is not the same as presenteeism. Far too many short-sighted organisations are mandating the RTO, return to office, so we can spend time and money on the daily commute only to sit there on Teams or Zoom calls with our colleagues in other offices. There's even talk of downgrading the pay, or worse, of those who don't spend enough time in the office. That is about presenteeism, not about asking people to be fully present. Let's start measuring that instead because there are many leaders who fail miserably at that. 
taking calls whilst in a meeting, checking their phone when someone is talking, continuing to look at their screen and typing when someone is asking them a question. Presenteeism and clock watching is not the same as being present. But here's the big one for me that rather slapped me around the face like a wet fish this week. There will come a time when we can't be fully present. And if we've squandered our time, our potential and opportunities, choosing to hide behind or inside our introversion rather than being fully present, that is the biggest waste of all. You may remember me saying that I don't want regrets on my deathbed, which means doing and being all that I can in alignment with my mission whilst I am here. We can all make a remarkable impact when we're present, even if your brain is currently telling you, oh, not me, Joe, not me. Well, yes, you. Just look at the introverted people who have shaped our current world and left a powerful legacy. Most of them did it quietly but with positive intention, determination and resilience. Those who want to determine what they really want to do with their lives tend to join my frustrated to flourishing journey and it is a guided journey, not a course or even a programme. And if you already know where you're headed and you know the legacy you want to leave, here are a few reminders of how to be fully present. Number one, be mindful of your responsibilities, commitments and expectations. This includes your expectations of yourself and others' expectations of you. Number two, Schedule pre-charging and recharging time around demanding situations. The intention is for this to be a non-negotiable. Number three, use your brilliant battery boosters where necessary, especially around those unexpected situations and spontaneous meetings. Number four, practice devoted listening. This means maintaining eye contact, listening to understand, not to respond and keeping all distractions at arm's length. And number five, observe without judgment. Easier said than done maybe, so start by noticing behaviours, yours and others, without labelling them. We can't be fully present all of the time, so please don't put that pressure on yourself. But use those earlier three questions to determine when is the right time for you given your life and your circumstances. Finally, for those thinking, why is it always us who have to make the effort? Well, that's the nature of living in a biased society. If we stand firm and expect people to notice us and our needs, we'll be stood on our own for a long time. It's time for us to calmly but intentionally step onto the court, be fully present when it matters, even if it comes at a personal cost initially, and look after the charge in our batteries. On that note, here's a cheeky little fact for you. Batteries drain faster when they are not used. So staying safe, out of the way, in the stands and comfortable may be draining your batteries faster than taking action would. It's called the self-discharge rate. And if our batteries are not used and recharged, their capacity can be reduced due to degradation. So... Negotiate with yourself and get out there on the court so you can be fully present when it matters. If you enjoyed this episode as much as I did, then please subscribe, rate us and leave a comment because we know that that helps other people find the podcast. And if other people find us, other introverts can flourish. You are listening to an intentional media production podcast.